Alright, so now we are going to look at all of the special project stuff. Excuse me, starting with the dog tags. Corporal Dwayne Hicks. These are quotes from some of the people. We're all, we're all in strung out shape, but stay frosty and alert. We can't afford to let one of those bastards in here. Hicks. Corporal Cynthia Dietrich. I'm sorry if I butcher half of these names. Looks like some sort of secreted resin. Yeah, but secreted from what? Private First Class, Rico Frost. Man, I'm telling you, I got a bad feeling about this jump. Or drop. Private First Class, Jeanette Vasquez. Hey Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No, have you? Trevor Wierzebowski. Wierzebowski, help! Lieutenant William Gorman. Looks like the new lieutenant's too good to eat with the rest of us grunts. Boy's definitely got a corn cob up his ass. Private First Class Daniel Spunkmeyer. Move it, Spunkmeyer, we're rolling. Hang on a second, there's something back here. Just get up here. Sergeant Al Apone. A day in the Marine Corps is like a day on the farm. You know, the funny thing is, my granddad was a Marine. And he was also a farmer. <laughs> so, maybe. Private First Class Tim Crow. You always say that, Frost. You always say, I got a bad feeling about this drop. Okay, okay. When we get back without you, I'll call your folks. Private First Class Mark Drake. They ain't paying us enough for this, man. Not enough to wake up to your face, Drake. Corporal Colette Farrow. We're in the pipe, five by five. Private First Class William Hudson. I'm ready, man. Check it out. I am the ultimate badass. I don't think he said art. But who knows. Waiting. I'm going to come back to that one. Private First Class M. Moore, the first of the Sephora Marines to be killed by the Xenomorphs. Private Moore's last words were reportedly, Hey, did you guys hear something in the vent? Private First Class S. Trubetskoy. Oh god. Received, he received help from his squad mates while grappling with Lurker. Unfortunately, the rookie squad was not properly briefed on the hazards of Xenomorph Acid Blood in close quarter combat. Private First Class J. Ziegler. Mistaking oncoming Wayland Yutani Mercs for backup, Private Ziegler told his squad, Of course they're here to help. There's a deadly alien species running amok. Alright, I'm going back to that one. I'm ready, man. Check it out. I'm the ultimate badass. State of the badass art. You do not want to fuck with me. Anyway. Um, Sergeant Z. Forcher. When Sergeant Forcher's squad lost their LT, the sergeant stepped up in a large way. Sergeant's heroic actions probably would have earned him a promotion, but the xenomorph's tail cut his career short. Corporal T. Ashley. After setting charges around a xenomorph nest, Corporal Ashley was set upon by xenomorphs guarding the nest. Instead of retreating, the corporal cooked a grenade and waited for the guards to attack him. Private First Class E. Greenleaf. Greenleaf thought that he was saved upon fire finding a nest of remote sentry turrets. Unfortunately, these Wei Yu turrets did not accept his transmissions that identified him as friendly. 
Private First Class M. McCalloway. After the loss of his whole team, he found some debris to defend himself in. The only problem was there were more Xenos than bullets. Lieutenant Norton led us. Lieutenant B. Norton. Lieutenant Norton led a small team all the way to the FTL ship, but the lieutenant's smart gun malfunction at the critical moment was giving Wei Yu Mercs an opening that took out his whole team. Corporal C. Bradley. Bradley was fond of quips and quick one-liners. He soon discovered when he met his end that Xenomorphs were not. Private First Class M. Jelly. Jelly was trapped inside the Wei Yu Research Lab when the Queen Xenomorph first went on a rampage. Impressively, he managed to last a full minute before being torn asunder. Private First Class J. Wash Washenfelder. Washenfelder claimed he was stronger than any man or beast. This is proved to be true until a, a life or leave lurker leapt onto him and proceeded to throw him off a cliff. Damn, what a way to go. Corporal M. Bailey. M. Bailey, a skilled dropship pilot, had no time to gas up the old bird before the Sulaco opened fire on the Sephora. Bailey attempted to guide the unwieldy beast down, but failed. Corporal C. Nelson. During the battle on the Sulaco, Corporal Nelson took hits from everything imaginable. After the crash, he got all the survivors of his squad to safety, then collapsed from his wounds. Oh, this one's unfortunate. Private First Class K. Barrington. When the ship was leaving port, K. Barrington was transferred to the Sephora due to a mix-up. Private J. Barron Barrington, on the other hand, had a rather enjoyable assignment on a nice tropical planet. That's sad. You could have avoided all of this. Private First Class D. Capes. Part of the initial team that swept the Sulaco, Private Case was last seen being sucked through a bulkhead when the ship suffered rapid decompression. Corporal S. Borowski, nicknamed The Experience, Borowski took shelter in the derelict facility after the crash. He was a huge problem for the Wei Yu security force until he ran out of ammo. Lieutenant P. Watkins, a natural leader with Lieutenant Watkins earned the respect of all of his subordinates. Unre unreliable reports suggest his last moments of life were used to try and strangle the very chest burster that killed him. Oh god. This is going to be one of those names that I can't pronounce. Sergeant R. Siwak led a flamethrower unit into the Sulaco. He proved just how effective fire-based weaponry is against Xenomorphs until acid blood punctured his field tank. Private First Class D. Regner. Regner rail rallied a number of Marines and led a fairly successful excursion into the Derek facility. Unfortunately, his squad was surprised by Wayland yutani soldiers carrying a smart gun. Private J First Class J. Ma. Ma was an accomplished marksman that managed to kill 15 Xenomorphs by himself. He was also the first Marine to see a spitter and learn about their deadly acid spit. Private First Class K. Morales. The mission to investigate the Sublaco was Private Morales' first mission as a Colonial Marine. His final words were, Do all missions end up this terrible? Corporal L. Pap. After the crash, Pap decided to show the Xenos what it meant to be a Marine. She met her end when she collided with a crusher, moving at full speed. Oh. Private First Class A Montgomery. Montgomery's squad encountered a xenomorph in the Hadley's Hope Bar. He decided to dispatch it using only a bottle of whiskey, a lighter, and the words, Hey guys, watch this. So now we're going off with the weapons. First one being uh, Hicks' shotgun. And it comes with an appropriate quilt for each. I like to keep this handy for close encounters. Gorman's pistol. Remember, short control bursts. Vasquez's smart gun. Let's rock! 
Hudson's rifle. This is an M41A pulse rifle. 10 millimeter with over and under 30 millimeter pump action grenade launcher. Vasquez's is pistol. You always wear an asshole, Gorman. Frost's flamethrower. What do you expect us to use, man? Harsh language? That was a good line. But yeah, so that's everything. And the only thing we really have left to do is the firing range, and I want to make a separate video about that. So, I'm going to do that now.